Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hi, my name is Anna Nikipirovic and I am a crochet and knitting designer, author and tutor. I am based in Watford in Hertfordshire and um, I have incredible passion for crochet and knitting. I have, uh, I was taught to knit and crochet as a child by my incredibly talented mum. She had some amazing skills, honestly. But obviously as a child, you know, I didn't really care and without practice, I have to say, all my skills were very quickly forgotten. I picked up my crochet hook again and needles um, when my mum passed away 15 years ago, it was my way of feeling incredibly close to her and invoking all the special memory. And I have to say, a, a true and utter obsession was born. And then I realised, like, why haven't I been doing this for all those years? This is awesome! And a few years after that, when I have trained to teach, so I've been uh, incredibly lucky to teach knitting and crochet at all levels across the UK at some fabulous shops and some amazing shows it's just so wonderful it's such a gift to be able to share what you have learned or what you picked up over the years with others and you know this wow moment when they get it when they start crocheting and start knitting and really loving the craft and loving the craft the same way you do it is truly truly amazing and i have to say i am rather obsessed with crochet i really am but i love knitting as well but i think crochet I have been lucky enough to have a few books published by the wonderful P. Bot Sedge Press and I just, I just do. I'm rather obsessed with crochet and knitting and I love yarn. I adore it. My claim to fame is that I have been a contestant on the wreath making competition on Kirsty's Handmade Christmas, which was I think three years ago. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I hope you can join me. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping!
Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet, and all things yarn? bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Uh, hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. We, uh, we are the only shop in town in the UK to uh, totally and utterly dedicated to everything to do with yarn. And if you think, wonder why I'm giggling, it's because I just got my legs stuck underneath here and I couldn't, you know that thing when you just can't get out? It's like when I tried on those cowboy boots in Carnaby Street and had a panic attack when I couldn't get them off. But that's another story. Anyway, good morning, uh, good afternoon. My name is John Scott. Uh, let me take you to our website and introduce to you who we are and what we do here. www.yarnlane.com uh, what you need to do is if you want to watch today's show, you can watch the live show there. Click on Watch Live. Then there's a message box on the right-hand side. You can send me a message. That will come up on the screen. You can also send me a message on Facebook Live and, and uh, email as well. But hello, can I have some socks? Please. That's from producer Hannah to everybody. Send a message. Right, if you scroll down, you see uh, everything that's under there. Uh, it's what we've got for sale in today's show. It's all on pre-order. Once we've introduced it, which I'm going to do right at the beginning, it will all be on the left-hand side under today's show deals, right? So we've got socks and we've got shawls. Now, also, if on the website there is a shop as well, which uh, will, you can buy other things that haven't been on today's show, but have been on previous shows, and some may not have been on shows yet, but there's lots and lots on the website itself. Now, look, I just saw that yesterday. There's a sock knitting accessory set there. We'll talk about that later. It's quite cute. It's got all sorts of things in it. Anyway, Anyway, so I'm going to take, well, let me introduce you to Anna, first of all. This is Anna here. Hi. Who is our crochet expert. Uh, and and you're, you're very, um, you look gorgeous as always. I'm very navy today. But you're very uh, column of colour, I'm aren't very you? navy. I yes. know. Do you know, I didn't realise it. Even, I don't know if you can see my oh, shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> even my shoes and my tights are navy. Do you know what? You just kind of pull like, put on clothes and then it's like, oh, that's, that's kind of all very much. I, I didn't even realise it. I just kind of like, oh. 
never no, mind. You, you look lovely. Go. You look lovely. But oh, normally you've got something on. We all go, oh, look at your brooch. Oh, look at this. And it's like. I've got this brooch. That's yeah. kind of a bit of pink. And nails. There you go. I'm a bit pink and. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I've noticed that today. Also, I never realize it. your other half just frightened the life out of me because when I go through, normally sit in the dressing room. Yeah. So I go like that and he's, oh, he's not here. Turned around and he was sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get on, let's get on, let's go on. My glamorous sisters will show you, as I show you, I'm going to show you everything we've got for sale in today's show and then we'll get on with the crochet later. So I'm going to start with socks. So what colour are you going to start with first, Hannah? Uh, well... Let's start with the cornflower blue. Okay, cornflower blue. Because right, it, yeah. it matches me, blue. Yeah, blue and blue and blue. Come so on. now, what you what you get in this bundle is you get the instruction. Uh, that obviously, that this is this is a, another picture. You'd get this. This is another, pi another oh, the picture. Another like colorway on, on 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 on. There is a picture on the web of this one. Yeah. Okay. It's a very uh, some some. Uh, we'll explain later. Right. So you get the instructions. And you get your ball of yarn. Now, to make a perfect pair of socks, you do need a mix, right? So this is 75% wool, 25% nylon. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant for socks, right? This colour is called uh, cornflower, and it's a beautiful, beautiful soft blue. You only need one ball of yarn to make a pair of socks, right? But we're going to talk about how you can mix and match in a little while. But that's lovely. So that one there is your cornflower. It's gorgeous colour. It's, it is a really summery colour. It's, it's sp springs of meadows. Oh. Now, if you want to make that longer in the leg... Uh, you, you will have enough yarn to make it a bit longer. Yeah, you perfect. will have enough left over, yeah, to, to make it a bit longer. Fourteen ninety nine. Now, the pattern, you can see on the pattern here, goes from sizes small, medium and large, shoe size... Oh, now, which is which on here? Oh, you go, UK. Three to four, five to six and seven to eight. They're the American sizes in brackets afterwards. Yeah. It's so very easy. If you want it a little bit longer in the foot, if you wanted to make it for a, lar for a larger foot length, yeah. then you just have to simply crochet some more rows. Yes, yeah. To, ma to make them a in bit the longer. In the centre bit, where you so just you will, you will crochet. So you will crochet after your gusset. Yeah. You will, you will cro crochet a bit more on the foot before your toe, toe decreasing. Okay. What happens if you want to make it wider? Can you make it wider? Or is it squidgy enough? Is it stretch enough? Or to make wider? it wider, it, it becomes a bit more complicated okay. because you need to add more stitches. But it's not actually difficult. I can yeah. explain everything. Yeah. It's not actually that but, but because you've got the, 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 the yarn isn't a solid yarn, is it? It's a nice, no, because it's, I can you, see you squinting because, it there. Because Look. of the stitch, you've, you've got a ni nice stretch to it. And obviously, when, when they like properly block, they will stretch a yeah. bit more. So you do have a, quite a lot of stretch to it. One thing I need to really stress when you're making crochet socks, because obviously, crochet fabric stretches more lengthwise uh -huh. than it does widthwise. Right. So they not like like knitted socks. When knit, when knitted fabric stretches both ways really well and they fit on your foot really uh -huh. lovely. With crochet socks, it's a little bit different. I have used extended double crochet. That's UK double lag lag like double crochet. So it does give you a bit more of room to move. However, what you must be very aware of is making the right size for your foot. So basically, okay, so for me, I have a wide foot, but I have a size six shoe. So right. length is size six, but quite wide. Um, so I, in crochet socks, I will always make their, their shoe size seven to eight, but the length in six, in five oh, to six. So you, you, like, you can cust like, customize them in this way. So really if you've easily. got tiny feet, if you've got a size four shoe, but you've got a wide foot, yes. you could do... You, you do the uh, bigger Either five, foot. five, six or seven to eight, but the, but, but but the length. Make it the short as, yes. the, as the small one. Absolutely. In Perfect. I Perfect. Mean, that, these, that's where my question was at, sort of going. I just yeah. asked it wrong. These ones are really lovely also because you don't have any pull. Because very often what people find in, sh in, in, cr in crochet socks, that you have this kind of pull around the heel and the top of the foot area. Uh -huh. So when you've got your heel, it kind of pull, pulls a lot here. On these ones, you don't have that because these ones are constructed as knitted socks. So we have a heel flap, we have a heel turn, we have a gusset. Right. So these are constructed exactly as knitted socks and therefore they have plenty of room, room here yeah. around your heel and the top of your foot. Perfect. So there's no pull there. Okay, that's the first colour. <laughs> Goodness knows how yes, we're going to get through all go. of them. So cornflower. that's cornflower. Then what's your green one called that the you've got The green there? one is hydrangea. Hydrangea? 
High Dranger is the green one. Again, you've got one uh, ball of yarn and your instructions there. By Anna. Anna has done these. Uh, and if you've got any questions, you get in touch with her at Moochka. Uh, oh, that's a lovely colour. Now, I, lovely if, colour. Uh, if somebody said hydrangea to me, I'd automatically think of like blue, pink or white. Yes, I did as well. But once I was like, actually, okay, I get it. It's the stems and the leaves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think hydrangea has so many like variations in colour, the actual flowers. Yes, of course. I think it'll be also, it depends different. on what kind of mud you've got, what soil you've got, because yes. they can change, can't they? Susan says, afternoon, I can't crochet, but I just love watching Anna. Oh, thank you, Susan. You should crush it. Come on. You yes, come on, like come you, on. Like you Susan, can do it. Come on. come on. Right, this one is beautiful. This one is this Sweet one. Pea. Sweet Pea. I've got a small swatch of this oh. one. Oh, don't go, oh, it's fine. <laughs> So this is Sweet Pea, there's the small swatch of that. And that's such a beautiful colour. He's a gorgeous colour. He's a gorgeous... They're all very summery colours. They're mm. all very fresh and just, oh. Yes, beautiful. That colour is absolutely beautiful. Again, you only need one ball of the yarn to make it. So in the kit, you've got one ball of yarn plus your instructions. I've got more yarn coming up in a minute. You might be thinking, oh, I'd like to make a pair of uh, those uh, the sweet pea for me, but I quite like some blue tit ones for my friend or my husband or whatever. So there are your socks there, right? Now we've also got shawls. So I've got a grey shawl here, first of all, which so is called is Dusty the... Miller. Yeah. Isn't that that? Isn't he in Trumpton or something like that, Dusty Miller? It's windy, gorgeous... no, that's Windy Miller. It's a Windy Miller. <laughs> okay. It's a gorgeous, um, a gorgeous. Um, Look at you shushing up your hair. As shushing a up my hair, you know. Yeah. My, there's a lot of my hair. Yeah, yes. there's a lot of my hair. You need to go to Curly Girl. They'll sort your hair out. Is it? Yeah. Right. So we've had this one I before, have we? We have. Fifteenth of May. This was on fifteenth of May. So yeah, I remember because we didn't. The patterns for the socks didn't arrive. They got lost. Uh, yeah, oh, they you got don't bear a grudge then, yeah. do you much? I remember. Don't bear a grudge. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now you need two balls yes, for this Yes, you one, need two you? balls to make a lovely shot and it's a gorgeous triangular shot. You can wear it with the triangle with the point at the front. You can wear it kind of like over the shoulder. I love a shawl. I'm a big yeah. shawl girl. So you can wear it kind of over the shoulder with a nice pin, you know, oh, for weddings nice, and stuff yes. like that, yeah. Or you can just kind of drape it over your shoulder. Lovely. If you're cold so in the summer. Now again, this what this is wool and nylon mix again. It, it, four it's ply. It's the same yarn. It's a yeah. gorgeous. It's the West York West York Crispin is like signature four ply, and the lace is stunning. I love this lace. Look at this. It's gorgeous. That is fantastic. Beautiful, there, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. It's a lovely summery shawl. And hold on, this is the right side. Let me turn it on. That's the right okay. side. You can really see the lace is gorgeous and it really isn't difficult to actually achieve. So you've got three panels of the lace mm -hmm. and three panels of plain stitching in between. And as I said, I'm a huge lover of shawls, so I think you can never get enough shawls. No, exactly. Now, I've got two other colourways, which we haven't got in the studio today. We haven't got the samples, but I've got a small little swatch okay, then. of the Black Current Bomb, which is just Pardon? amazing. Black Current Bomb, this one's called. It's, look at this, it's so lush. It's beautiful colour, it isn't is it? It is gorgeous. Also, you know, that colour... I know you're saying it's a summer shawl, but in the winter, mm -hmm. if you're of a certain age, wearing that colour next to your skin here reflects the beautiful tones and makes you look you, warmer you and not quite so yes. silvery, you know, in winter. Right, yeah. okay, so let's have a but look at that. Oh, sorry, it's me. I mean, their shows are all year round. It's not only summer, I'm just saying because kind of yeah, summer. Yes, 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 but yes. they are all year round. I wear shows all year round, so. Mm. Yeah, so this one again, you get two balls of the black current bomb. 75% wool, 25% nylon, plus the instructions. Gorgeous. And there's the little sample of that one made up. And then last but not least for the shawl, we've got it in the... Now, that's the same colour as those socks, isn't it? It's a cornflower blue, yeah. Cornflower blue. I love that colour. Love you could wear it. the same sh socks and shawls on the same day. Matchy-matchy, mm, like me today. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you get two balls. 75% wool, 25% nylon. They are West Yorkshire spinners, which are, who are very, very highly regarded are, suppliers yeah. of the They yarn. are amazing. They yeah. are absolutely amazing. Uh, 1999. If you went to a shop, how much would that cost you? Do you know what I mean? And then you've got the pattern forever. You could just keep making them in all yeah. different colours, can't you? Yeah. So that's 1999. Christmas is coming up. Perfect yeah, gifts. it is. We've got Christmas Perfect next gifts. week. And they are quick to make because it's crochet. Cro crochet is quick. And you've got a lot of lace there, which goes really fast. So Okay, perfect. Yeah. Now, what I've got here is I've got balls of yarn 
of different colours. Now, if you want to make a pair of socks in green or in blue or in blue tit or... Uh, what's that That's one? That's the blue tit, yeah. That one is... Right. Or you get two balls of it to do the, the, sh the shawl with. But what we were saying earlier, imagine if you've bought one of the colours of the sock. Make the, the trim, the heel and the toe a different colour. I used to have socks like that all the, all yeah. the time. I used to wear socks like that. So I'm just going to take you through some balls of yarn here that we've got for sale on their own individually. So if I start with this one, which is... Oh, I wasn't expecting that one. Chocolate lime, but it's perfect. It's perfect colour for a chocolate lime. Um, that colour is amazing, is it? 750, you get one ball of the four-ply yarn. It is the 75% wool, 25% nylon. Love that colour. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's a beautiful colour. So I whether you make green. the shawl, whether you make the socks, or, or any other project, because you can use this for so many other projects Absolutely. as well, can't you? So that one there is your chocolate lime at £7.50 for that yarn ball. Then I've got... Oh, what colour is this one then? This one hasn't got a colour on it. Would you like the code, ha Hannah? No, 06, this one ends. Sweet Shop Bubblegum, this one's called. Mm -hmm. That'll have a lot of E numbers in it, wouldn't it? <laughs> so anyway, that's a beautiful, like, kind of uh, aqua, peacock, sort of that kind of colour. It's lovely, isn't it? Go beautifully with that. Oh, actually, those two would look nice together, wouldn't they? Mm. So 750 for a 100 gram ball, perfect for socks. I'm struggling with ball or shank or whatever. Anyway, then I've got this one, which is called Blueberry Bonbon. Oh, that sounds nice. Doesn't it? Sounds delicious. The lovely colour as well, isn't it? It is a lovely colour. Blueberry Bonbon. Again, 750 for that ball. But you can buy as many as you want. Don't think I can only buy one. Um, you can, if you're going to make a, like Christmas, you can do Christmas socks for everybody. Mm -hmm. be lovely, wouldn't it? Perfect time to start. Yeah. Never too early. <laughs> well, no, the trouble is, it'll look, we're in August already. Yes. How is it yes. August suddenly yes. already? You know what I mean? Christmas it's, fly, is, it's flying. It's like us. Totally. Yeah. totally. Especially now we're allowed to do a few more things. It's, Absolutely. Things are going to move faster, aren't they? Right, so this one's called Blue Tit. Now, oh, lovely. if you knitted up the shawl in this, mm -hmm. Would it be speckledy? How would it? It would be speckled. It will, it's speckle effect. Speckle effect. Because this is, I mean, it does have stripe, but the stripes, they are nice long stripes, uh -huh. but it's for a sock that will give you more uniform right. stripes. But for a shawl, because the rows are so much longer, oh, it will yeah. look oh, like, it look spe lovely. like speckly. Yeah, oh, I'm sure you would, yeah. yeah. So Imagine, if you want... Yeah, so, no, so, go on, so, go on. So. Imagine doing the actual plain... Plain section in the speckled one, and then the lace section in a plain one. Oh, like that? Yeah, that would be amazing. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Right, okay, or, uh, uh, or do buy two of them to make the shawl, or one of them to make the socks. It's yeah. lovely, isn't it? 750 that one's blue tit. And last but not least, I've got Peacock. This is really yeah, lovely. Peacock goes really nicely with the cornflower blue, or the hydrangea, actually. Hydrangea, so if you're making corn, socks, oh, hang on. Yeah, that was hydrate. That was, oh yeah. no, hydrate yeah. is lovely. Yeah. So you can make like let's say you can make the ribbing, that heel, and the toes in one color. Uh -huh. So let's say in the ha in in hydrangea and the inside in the pick. But what you could do is if you is. bought that, you could do so. You then got two balls. Yeah. So you do one with a green toe, heel, and rib. Yeah. And the rest of it that, and then yeah. do the other pair with the toe, heel, exactly. and rib in that one. And so out of two balls of yarn, you will get four pairs of socks. Because that would be enough. Yeah? Fantastic. You, you won't get four. You'll get two pairs two of pairs socks. Two pairs of socks. Yeah, oh. four socks. Two oh, pairs of socks, yes. I was thinking, oh, how's she done that? No. Anyway, anyway, I'm not going to go through. Oh, no, let me just do this. Let me just do this here. Because I'm, I'm, where's that one gone? Oh, is that knitting? Oh, yeah, no, it says knitting. I don't know why that's here. Sorry. Well, if it has st stitch markers, so you It's got that. knitting accessory for socks, it says. What does it have? You need st stitch markers. So for socks... Have a look in there. Could I you have use a that look. one for crochet? You can use, because it's got open one and you've got the needles. Yeah, you can use that. I don't know what that thing is. Well, <laughs> that's kind of cute. <laughs> oh, it's a stoppers for your needles. Yeah, okay. Right, uh, you can use two things out of here, which, you, which are very, 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 very important. Uh -huh. So if I just open it gently. Oh, okay. She's going to open it. I everybody. will show you exactly what I mean. It's vital for socks you have stitch markers. You need them desperately. I've got stitch markers here. Yeah. I've got a pack and of stitch got markers the, here. 
Right, hang on, but we'll do that one first. So talk about the one that Anna's got in her hand, then we'll talk about this one. Stuart does loads of knitting, says, I love the West Yorkshire Spinner Signature Floor Four Ply. Ian says, great shows uh, today and how popular Aww. yarn is at the moment. I've just bought some handmade Granny Square blankets. Oh, no, you're supposed to make them, not buy them. Right, so look, what have you got in there? Look, they look like a little sheep. A what? They look like a little sheep. Yeah. These are awesome. Okay. <laughs> Cleaning Where's his, his legs? Are oh, you looking oh, at him from the legs, top? But he's got the little fleece here. And uh, he's got the little mouth here. Oh, okay. It's awesome. Look, you can see it better. No. It's open. Anyway, I get anyway, too excited yeah. over there. Back to the fantasy th land. They're really cool. Look, it's got little eyes. Oh my god. All right, moving they're on. They're very cute. What anyway, else is in there? What I was made. <laughs> what I was made to say <laughs> that you need them because they are the open ones. Right. So you need them for socks. So when you crochet in your socks, you will need three. The stitch markers, two in different colors, and one can be in the same color, but because you will use it to denote the beginning of your round. Right. But you definitely need two in different colors, and of course, sewing up needles are vital for every pro uh -huh. pro project. And this one, actually, if you're a knitter, these are the stoppers for your four point, for your double pointed needle. So you oh, can just put them at the end. Oh, that's so that brilliant. So, so yeah, this is actually a very useful kit. So that's for knitting, right? You can use them, some of them for crochet hook. That, that's no good for a crochet hook. Maybe you do both. Maybe you think of Christmas presents for people who do yeah. knitting. There this it is. This is a good, a, good, a good thing to have, yeah. Lovely. But also, um, I've got um, stitch markers, which are essential sort essential, of for crochet. Yes. Different sizes, different colours in there. Fourteen ninety nine. They're the little sheep as well, look, in are pink and blue. Are they little sheep as well? These are so awesome. Little don't you be putting those sheep. in your bag now. <laughs> <laughs> Take everything. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, so should we do some crocheting? Yes, okay. I want to show you socks. Yeah. Socks, 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 socks. First of all, I want to show you how to do the start. So when you know when you've got your cuff, yep. I want to show you how to join your cuff and start working down your socks. So your socks are, are top down, so they start from here and work all the way down. Right. So you start with the cuff, and I will show you how to do this. And what size, um, what size hook are you using? Three millimeters. Three millimeter hook. Yeah, you can get them. This one is from Yarn Lane. I borrowed it because <laughs> I lost. I left. <laughs> I left my one at home. Yeah. So this one is actually one which is really lovely hook. Actually, yeah. Very nice hook. You can buy it on Yarn Lane. Yeah. Right. So when you're making, do. Bear in mind that this is a bit larger because I was doing this this on four millimeter because that because that because because that's the hook size I took with me which is wrong. Right. For this you will use three. Right. So your ribbing, so your top your top part of your sock, so this so, so this part here mm -hmm. is done in rows. So you will work in double crochet, so that UK double crochet that will be American sing single crochet. And you will work into the back loop of every single stitch. So you start with chain one. Mm -hmm. And you see your stitch is made out of two legs. You see it's got a V on top. Uh -huh. So you will go into the back leg. So the back leg from, from you of that stitch. Grab your yarn and pull it through. Two loops on a hook. Yarn around the hook and pull it through both. And then again into the back loop of every single stitch. Mm -hmm. So that would create those wonderful ridges on your ribbing, it also gives you a nice elasticated edge. It kind uh -huh. of, it looks elastic, it feels elasticated, it is elasticated. Yeah. So then when you finish, so you're going to work on into the back loop of every single stitch, and when you finish all the rows that are required, as it says in the pattern, uh -huh. you have to start working on your leg. So I'm not where I need, need to be, but you know, just, just for the purpose of this, I yeah. will show you. So then when you need to join it into, into the round, you grab your two ends, so the end you started with, right. and uh, this in here, and again, you join them by slip stitching, and working again into the back loop of the first stitch, uh -huh. and then grabbing the other side of your foundation chain, and then doing a slip stitch. So yarn around the hook, pull it through all of those stitches, and then through the stitch on your top, on top. On, on, on your hook, I mean. So then again, into the back loop of the first stitch, uh -huh. into the back of the foundation chain, 
yarn around the hook and pull it through all those stitches without any yarn around uh, any any yeah, like yarn around the hook at uh -huh. all so you work this way all the way until your whole edge is joined obviously my round is a bit smaller you will have yeah a of course long, so you'll make this, this is the cuff at the top this of the is sock, the cuff at the it? top yeah. but obviously my one is just a small sample so mm -hmm. your one will be see so you slip stitch it all the way along so that's how you join it then when you come one is oh there it is oh. then when you come to your one and one more so this is how it's easy because if you're going to do your cuff in your green and then your your body in blue yes you've made your cuff almost separately haven't Absolutely, you here yeah. and then you can so start let's say with now you can i'm going to start it with I don't have a separate bottle i have i can use this one just just for the for the purposes of demonstration uh-huh i will show you Right, so now you will start wor start working into the ends of those rows. Right, yeah, because so you've you've now turned it on its side, haven't exactly. you? Exactly. So now you are on its side and you're going in and you're going to work into the row ends mm -hmm. where you will start to pick up for your legs your leg stitches. Yeah, so what we've done is that bit at the top. So we've there, done this it, yeah? and now we're doing this. Okay. So what you have to do, you're going, you're going to work in extended double crochet, which mm -hmm. I will show you how it's made. Let me just, let me just on the last, because I'm changing color on the last slip stitch. When you, if you were going, going to do the leg and the cuff in different colors, change the color on the last slip stitch. Right. So you see when you have your last slip stitch, mm -hmm. grab your new color and finish off the slip stitch with this one. Mm -hmm. That way it gives you a nice joint, you see? So cornflower, you very popular. Third of the stock of the cornflower has gone already. I'm not surprised it's a lush colour. Lush. But I have to say, the other ones are lush too. Yeah, they'd be all three are beautiful. Right, so now we are going to chain one and we're going to work in extended double crochet into every single row end because we need to pick up into every single stitch. Uh -huh. So insert your hook into this first stitch into into the end of the first stitch uh -huh. or, or the side I suppose of the first stitch grab your yarn and pull it through so we have two loops on hook so now yarn around the hook pull it through one loop only two loops on hook left right. yarn around the hook and pull it through both. both so this is an extended double crochet so this gives you a bit more of a stretch uh -huh. so it's a nice stretch it's straight like like stretchy stitch so now again we're gonna we have a next stitch so we're going to work, insert a hook, grab a yarn and pull it through, yarn around the hook through one loop, and then yarn around the hook through two. See, and then into the next side. So we work, so we working into to the end of every single row, mm -hmm. and again. Uh, Linda's enjoying watching. She's knitting socks with the exact yarn that we've got on screen. Really? She Fantastic. says it's gorgeous quality. It is beautiful quality. It's West, it's West Yorkshire spinners. They are lush. Got another message here from Emma. Love listening to Anna. She just makes me smile. I oh, know what you mean, you, Emma. Emma. She doesn't. She's got fabulous energy. She Emma. walks into the room and the... She's not like oh. this in real life. She's all grumpy, really, yes, in other rooms. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and someone else just, a beautiful shawl. Never done socks before, but I fancy trying them. What beautiful colours of it. yarn, says Jan. Go for it. And again, if you need any help at all, if you kind of stuck on something, my details are at the back of the pattern, so you can always email E e email me yeah and i will i will i will help you along i'm not abandoning you to your socks you know i will always be there she's got blog me. instagram and facebook she's got an email address and she's got a website so there's no hiding there's no hiding if you need help i'm always there yeah a question from mandy saying hi john nana can anna show me how she holds her wool i'm really trying to learn crochet thank you from mandy okay. in staffordshire so the way i hold my one i hold my the way I work, so my left hand is responsible for my yarn, my right hand is responsible for my, for my hook. You can either hold the hook as you would a pen mm -hmm. or as you would a knife. I hold my one as a knife, I hold it on top. Now, the way I keep my tension on my yarn, I keep it tight in those two fingers, so in my pinky and my ring finger here. 
Right. You can wind it around your pinky once if it will help. So you can wind, wind it around your pinky once and then insert your index. index finger underneath the, wo the working yarn. So you see, so then your yarn is in this kind of position here. So you've got wind it around your pinky, your yarn goes at, your, at the back of your fingers and then around your index finger once. So it's very like the, the way uh, on a sewing machine, you have to put your thread yeah. round, round and down. So it's Absolutely. Just, yeah. And then your middle finger and your thumb are responsible for holding your work ready for your next stitch. Right. So this is what keeps your work open and your next stitch going. Your left hand is responsible for your hook and also if you have a tail for you for your tail. So you see, so when I'm grabbing my next stitch, I grab my yarn from around my index and my work. Right. See, so it goes, I wrap it around. So not on top, I wrap it nicely around from from the bottom to the top and pull it through. Uh -huh. So it wraps nicely around. Again, everyone develops their own way of holding the yarn and the hook. You do whatever is, com is comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. There is no such such thing as as holding the yarn and the hook in the wrong way or right way or, or, or whatever. As long as the stages look as they should, then you are okay. Yeah, of course. So, you know, don't let anybody tell you anything. <laughs> oh, they'll have to answer to Anna. Yes, tell, tell them to come and see me. Uh -uh. <laughs> right, so if you do your extended, extended crochet all the way around, you see, your work is, start, is starting to look like this. So then you will carry on working in extended double crochet all the way around until you are ready for your heel. So you see, so this is the area. Yeah. You, you can place a mark at the beginning of the round to denote the beginning of the round, but otherwise than that, you will work in continuous spiral. So which means you will not slip stitch at the end and you will not chain one at the beginning. You just work all the way around until you reach your heel flap. Uh -huh. So then your heel flap is worked in rows and in double crochet. So no, no, not extended double crochet anymore. You it's work in double crochet on exactly the half the number of stitches. Right. So for the smaller size, we have 44 stitches. So the heel flap is work on, on, um, on 12, on 22. My uh, God, what is Have with you not had coffee yet today? this morning? Yeah. I didn't actually. Yeah. On 22. So it will look something like this, you see? So then you will do your heel flap. Again, follow the pattern, the, pa the, pa the pattern, it will tell you exactly how many rows to work on your heel flap. But, uh -huh. but you see the difference between extended double crochet yeah. and just standard double crochet. See, so half the number of stitches, half of your sock here is oh, on work. Oh, I see. So you're only putting it onto half of, I get it. Yeah. So you, so you have create, created a heel flap. Yeah. So now what you have to do, which, which I will show you, is work a heel turn so if i can show you what it looks like so heel turn is this wonderful little triangle here you right. see so this is at the bottom of your heel this this, this is where your heat feels sits in nicely uh-huh see so the, i'm gonna show you how it's created because this is created using short short rows we mock like short rows but let me show you how it's done so when you have created all the rows of your heel flap you are on your right side row. The, the reason you are with your right side facing for your next row, the reason you know this is because you are facing the top, the back of your sock. If you were facing this way, it means you are on the wrong side of your heel flap because your opening is here. So, so this is what is, what, what is going to be inside of your sock. Yeah. So with right side facing, you are here. So now what we have to do is we're going to work to the half the number of of stitches that we have on a heel flap, which for me is 11. So I'm going to work 11 stitches, so 11 double crochet. So chain one at the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, hmm? five. six, oh. seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11. 
Uh -huh. And now what we're going to do, we're going to decrease. So we're going to work double crochet two together because by decreasing and joining, we are creating this wonderful curve that, that, that is needed for our heel. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do now is double crochet two together. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to insert our hook into the next stitch, grab a yarn and pull it through, insert a hook into the following stitch, grab a yarn and pull it through, so that's three loops on our hook, then uh -huh. yarn around the hook and pull it through all three. So that is our decrease. So that's double crochet two together. And then we go, we're going to work one double crochet into the next stitch. And now we are going to turn our work around. So we're leaving all those stitches here unworked. We turn around and we're working backwards now. Oh. So chain one. One double crochet into the next two stitches. Uh -huh. And again, we're going to double crochet two together over the next two stitches. So one, grab your yarn and pull it through. Next stitch, grab your yarn and pull it through. Three loops on hook, yarn around the hook and pull it through all three. And then one double crochet into the next stitch. Uh -huh. And again, we are going to turn. And you see what we have created is a little step. Uh -huh. So on this row now, what we're going to do is join this step with double crochet two together. Mm -hmm. So chain one, work to one stitch before your step. So one, two, and three. And now we are going to work with double crochet two together with the one leg of the double crochet two together into the next stitch and one into the stitch row below. So insert your hook into the next stitch, grab your yarn and pull it through. And now we are going to insert a hook into the next stitch row below. You see the miss stitch here. Uh -huh. Grab your yarn and pull it through. Three loops on hook, yarn around the hook, pull it through all three and then one double crochet into the next stitch. You see, and it's already a little curve is, fall, is uh -huh. forming, you already see it. And then again, we're going to turn. Oops, Daisy. And then again, we are going to work to one stitch before a step. So chain one, and one stitch into one double crochet into every single stitch before the last one. So we've, so we've got the last stitch here. And we're going to work double crochet two together into the next stitch and the stitch what were two row two rows below now. So one leg of double crochet two together into the next stitch. Mm -hmm. One leg into the following stitch. And pull it through all three. And then one double crochet into the next stitch. And turn, you see? And you see your little curve of your heel turn is really forming now. You work this way until every single stitch of your heel flap has been worked. Oh, I see. So, so then, it, I get it, yeah. So that's what creates the curve. Let me just show you one more yeah. row. Chain one. And then work one double crochet into every single stitch until we reach, until the last stitch before, be, before this row ends, you see? Mm -hmm. So we've got one stitch here. And again, we're going to work double crochet two together by joining those two yeah. stitches. So, in and into the next stitch, two rows. So below. you keep just doing that till you run out of stitches, yes. basically on the lower yes. on the lower bit. One yeah. double crochet into into okay. the next stitch, and then turn. Turn it round. And exactly the same. Okay, thing. I've got a question from who? Caroline, Go did on. you say? Question from Caroline saying, "Hi, John, Anna, and team. I always." Uh, end up with holes when working in rounds what am i doing wrong what do you mean holes are you are you having the holes where you where you join your work or i well it will will be i if you join joining your rounds when you work in your rounds uh, with slip stitch and one chain at the beginning uh, pull the slip stitch a bit tighter if you're doing ten turning chains at the beginning and then you slip stitching into your turning chain your turning chain, if you're creating holes, make sure that when you when you're working into your turning chain, you pick up two strands of the chain and not just one, because that will create an open work. So that will kind of really, really stretch. So if you if you're using turning chains and in a round you work in, you slip stitching into into the uh, top of your turning chain, make 
make it to through through two strands of the of the of the chain, or just pull it a bit tighter. Yeah, is that all right, Caroline? Could, could understandable. Also, you, um, what um, I've noticed is if you when you when you turn round to take when you've been up like that and you go through, a lot of people miss the first. Yes, the you, first one. Uh, they go to the next looking yes, one. Yes, absolutely. It could be that when you're working in your turning chain, and your if anything is bigger than at um, okay, so a half treble. A half treble has a turning chain of two, uh -huh. and me, which means you will not work the stitch at the base of this turning chain and treble has a has has a ter turning chain of three which means you will not work a stitch underneath it as well what i do i completely i very often don't use it unless i can i unless i can work stitch stitches into into the base of my ter of, of my turning chains i don't use it what i will do is chain one don't treat it as a stitch and then just work a double crochet or a treble into the stitch at the base of this chain one. So that way you will not have any holes at all. There you go. So hole free. Hole free. Yeah, it's when you do, as I said, when you have anything bigger than a one chain of a turning chain, then it will create a hole if you were meeting the, st the stitch at the base. So to omit that, always chain one and, uh, wor and, wor and work a normal stitch. It just looks neater. Okay. What would you like to show us on the sock next then? Okay. I need to show you how to pick up your, st your stitches for your gusset. Uh -huh. I'm always done with this. I have just one more row. On oh, the no, end. that's fine. It's just we need to talk about the shawl very quickly as well. Before, yeah. Before how much time do we have? Uh, well, how much do you want on your shawl? Uh, Five minutes on your shawl. Okay. No, no, it's up to you. Hold on. Oh, I'm going to just concentrate. Shh, shh. I'm doing it. I'm just speeding. Count, 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 count. Speeding now. There's not much to talk about the shawl, really, to be okay, honest. Okay, so the last few minutes. Stress. So you keep going with the sock, and Hannah will shout at us when we have to move on to the okay. shawl. We have a Chris question. We have a question about from Christine about the shawl. Go on. Is the shawl pattern suitable for a beginner? I'm just finishing my first item, a little drawstring bag. Christine from Bradford. Right, Christine. Um, if you know how to work double crochets in UK, the, in in you in UK terms, double crochet and trebles, you will be absolutely fine. Oh, there you go. So you need double crochets, trebles, and half tre and, uh, and chains, and you will be absolutely fine. Even to do the lace and everything. Yes. So you only so need those So the lace is actually stitches. created. The lace is only created with trebles, double crochets, and chains. So if you can do those, you can do it. You will be absolutely fine. Yeah. There you go. I'll put that back. Right. No, sh 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 she's counting. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last thing, last thing you want to do is me talking about numbers while you're trying to count. How <laughs> many minutes? You need five minutes. Oh, <laughs> Five minutes, okay. I no. just want to show you quickly because yeah, it's yeah, kind don't of... Worry. You've got pictures in your pattern, so don't worry. I haven't abandoned you completely. You've got like pictures and tutorials in yeah, your pattern. Yeah, look, 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 look. So it's kind of, so you will be able to, you know, know stuff. What I want you to say, okay, so when you finish your heel, your heel turn, you will need to grab your stitch markers in two different colours. Right. Because it's very important that, that, that right. you actually have that. So now... You're going to pick up for your gusset. So gusset is those, de is those, de those decreases here. Okay, just you move see? to that. There it, we brilliant. go. Thank you. you see, you've got those old decreases here. You can see it all. Yeah. So you're going to work the stages of your heel turn. Blah, 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 blah. And then for your gusset, you're going to pick up along your heel flap. Almost there, almost there, almost there. I always try to do so many tutorials and I don't realize, don't realize how quickly the hour flies actually by, goes. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So now what you, go, what, what you are going to do, you're going to work 11, depending on what size. For me, for the smaller size, is 11 sti lakh stitches. So basically you're going to work into one stitch into every other row. So you wor you're working again into row ends. Mm -hmm. So you're going to work 11 stitches, so into uh, it's, it's approximately into every other row. So work one double crochet all the way along. So one stitch into every other row. So that's, I, I need 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
10 and 11. And when you reach your 11 stitch, you're going to place one of your markers onto that stitch that you have just made. Uh -huh. So now you are going to work in extended double crochet on the top of, on top of your foot. So you're going to work here. So into every single stitch on the top of your foot in extended double crochet. Do, 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 do. Mm. Yeah, I think I pack, yeah, I always try to show as much as I possibly no, can. That's brilliant. But, yeah, but you don't actually really, like, you're absolutely right. The, f the hour just flies. Mm -hmm. Right, almost there. And because I'm hurrying, it's like. <gasps> <laughs> Supposed to be a craft of peace and tranquility <laughs> and mindfulness. <laughs> yes, almost there, almost there. While Anna's doing that, how are we doing stockwise, Hannah? Sweet pea, when you've all checked out, 12 left of those. Oh, sweet pea's nice. Yeah. Good, good, good choice. Hydrangea. A third of those has gone. Quite a few in baskets. And then the cornflower. Seven left. Oh, cornflower. Okay, so now. Oh, hang on, no, it's go, more sorry. important. There's seven available, but nine people have got it in their baskets. So two oh. of you already are going to miss out on that one. Just be careful. Right, sorry, carry on, carry sorry, on. Carry. Sorry, sorry. Right, so okay, so now we've done a top of our foot. Now we work working on the other si side of the heel flap. And uh -huh. again, we have to pick up our stitches. So one approximately into every other row. Yes, yeah, so you but want 11 time, again down yeah, here. Yeah. You do one and then you place your marker. Oh, so you okay. place your marker on the first stitch you have made and then you pick up the rest. So 10, so ten more. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight, nine. Oh, should, should be closer. Let's do the ten, ten, ten oh, here. Sh 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 right. So now you are going to work only in extended. Double, double crochet. Right. So what happens now, you will work nicely along the way. You will stop two, two stitches before your first marker. Uh -huh. And you will extend the double crochet two together. Then you will work along your foot. You will work the stitch with the marker. Mm -hmm. And then you will decrease by extended double crochet two together after the marker. So this one, two, sti two stitches before the marker, this one, two stitches after the marker. Right. And on the next round, you will do a plain round, which means you will not decrease at all. You will just kind of do a plain one, mo moving the markers up as you work. On the following round, you will decrease. So you decrease every other round. So now you will decrease on the next round. Then the following round, you won't decrease, then decrease not because right. until you reach the same number of stages that you have started with on the foot. Right. On the leg even. Yeah. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. As I said, you've got picture to la la to la to la to toros in your patterns. Yeah. So don't worry. And also you can email Anna if you, you need You can any, email any me. Help at all. Right. Very quickly then on the uh, shawl, the grey one is sold out. The grey one's gone. <gasps> That's the Oh, well, it's sold out. Sold I have out. The sample, though. <laughs> and the one that you're using for the demo, the Black Current Bomb, more people in baskets than we've uh, we've got stock of. For it was that really one. nice with my navy, actually. Yeah. It got was really nice. But with also, my it's, navy. like I say, it's a very flattering colour for gorgeous. all ages. That one's yeah. up. And then in cornflower, More people in baskets than we've got stock of. Right, so please be careful, please be careful, please be careful. Right, what do you want to very quickly show I want to show you very shawl? quickly. Two important things when you're making a show, what I'll show you in a minute is blocking your show after you make it. Uh -huh. That is vital. It's 
there. But I just want to show you a quick, quick, quick start on the lace. So here, you see, I've done a plain, plain section of my show. So it's this part here. See, it's this part here. Yeah. And now I'm starting my, my lace. I just want to show you how simple it is. That lace isn't scary because lots of pe people are kind of quite scared of lace. Can you just actually. tell me what those stitches are that you've already got in that one, in, in your solid bit there? Are they Right, trebles, so I've got a mixture here. So I've got, I started with trebles. Yeah. Then I have a row of doubles. Yeah. Trebles, doubles, trebles, So doubles. if you can do those two stitches, we're easy so You'll far. be absolutely yeah. fine. Obviously, shows work on increasing, so this is how you expand. So you start in this li little corner here, so you, so you start right at the top, yeah. and then you expand your wings, so right. that this is your wingspan. Yeah. So you expand on every single row. Perfect. So now, I'm do I started already doing the lace, the, the, the chain spaces for our lace. So now I'm reaching my corner so this is what what you call it's not a corner it's a spine it's what you call a spine so you are also increasing all the way along the spine so you've got a nice and very defined spine uh -huh. which i love a good spine on a shawl i have to say so chain four you're going to work one double crochet into into the center chain two space so this is your center the spine is your center the center of your shawl chain two and one double crochet again and now we are again going, going to start the lace part. So chain four, one, two, three, four. Miss the next two stitches, so one, two, and then one double crochet into the next three. So this is the base of our, of, of our lace panel. And again, chain four. Miss two stitches, and again, one double crochet into the next three. So this is how we are creating our base. But I want to show you. So one, two, three, four. Miss two, one double crochet into the next two. I also want to show you how to quickly best block your shawl. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Just got four minutes. Four minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so da, 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 you know what I mean now. <laughs> <laughs> you just go la, 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 chain four and that. Okay? Yeah. Right, so now... When you blog, when you finish your gorgeous show, when your gorgeous show is finished, was that all you did for the lace? Well, no, there's more, but we have no time. We have no, five no, 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 no. It's it's simple. <laughs> it's simple. What you're saying, it's, it's simple. Yes, the lace is very simple. So and also we've done this before, so you can go and look it up on yes, YouTube. Yes, you can. Yeah. There is actually I show a lot more. So there is a lot more, so you can watch the program from from before, and there's a lot lot more explained. Yeah. You see, then on the next one, you will work trebles into those chains. 15th those chains of May, that spaces. is, sorry, 15th of May. Yes. Yeah, go on. So then you, if you can see, you, you, we created those chain four spaces. So on the next one, you will work chain, chain Three minutes. threes and then chain fours into those spaces. Yeah, perfect. Anyway, blocking, blocking. when you finish your shawl, you need to take your shawl from amazing to outstanding. So by outstanding, you mean, I mean, opening up all the lace. So you only need to open up. So the best way to do it is soak your shawl in water and some like wool, like, like wool wash or something. Yeah, wool we'll lights or something like yeah. that. Yeah, rinse it out, roll roll it in a towel to get all the excess like, wa la like water out and then pin it out to dry. So on your spare bed or on the floor, place some towels and really spread out your shawl. And what is important here, that you place a pin in every single one of those lace chevrons, you see? Uh -huh. So you need, so, so you will need to place a pin into every single so one. So you make it excessive. You don't just pin it where you think it's going to go. You stretch it out. You stretch it yeah. out because that's what opens up your lace, and yeah. that is vital because if you don't do this, your lace will not be showing. Yeah. So basically, you pin, you use pins here, uh -huh. and you use pins at the bottom. So then you will leave it out too, too dry, and you will dry in exactly the same way as you pinned it. Okay. And you have to do that every time you wash it. So next time you wash on it. On this one, yes. On this one, yes. So wear it yeah. a few times. Then when you rinse yeah. it through, you need to block mm -hmm. it again. Anything with the lace has to be, 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 be blocked afterwards. Perfect. Yeah. And that's it. How long would that take to dry then? A night, over, like oh, overnight. overnight. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't do it at lunchtime thinking you're going to wear it that evening because you'll be going no. out with a soggy shawl. No. But you see, it really opens up all those lace. Yeah. Because this lace is such an amazing, it's beautiful lace actually. It 
pad the pattern of the lace is absolutely gorgeous and that really opens it up and you really want to show your your shawl off perfect when are you in next uh next month okay next month <laughs> Next I'm month. once a month person. Okay. We love seeing you. Oh, we love thank seeing you. I love you. being here, actually. Thank you very much indeed. We have to do you for longer than an hour next time. Right. Okay. So what do I need to say? The shawls are basically all sold out. And you need to check out your baskets. And the socks. Cornflower's very limited. You're not all going to get it, basically. It's that limited. Hydrangea is the green one few more of those, but that's all. And then last but not, uh, Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea, loads in baskets of Sweet Pea. Basically, by the end of today, they'll all have sold out if you're not careful. That's all. And then look on the website for all the other colours that I did show you earlier that are all available. Oh, the colours Be are lovely. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, Yarn Lane will be back on, what day is it? Monday with Rebecca Reed. Rebecca Reed's back from her from jollies. She'll be back in on Monday. Uh, if not, I'll see you on Sewing Street tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Anna, thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And uh, it's what? Uh, not Cat. Cat the producer's not in. It's International Cat Day tomorrow. I'll see you then.